Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody um, on this um, at least uh, bright morning. <laughs> where I think I, I mentioned the weather. Probably everybody is sick of talking about it, but uh, we do have a couple of, I, I just want to note, uh, and, and people may already know this, we do have a couple of people who are making their way here still, I think, um, including Harry Mulgrave, so we hope he, he's en route uh, and he's supposed to present today. So the, we hope the sessions all go well. Everybody's here this morning, and uh, I just want to uh, welcome everybody sincerely for uh, making this possible. It's quite, a, quite a, uh, an incredible event, and, and I really want to express my appreciation to everybody who is attending, and most of all, Ralph and uh, Steenblick, who was here, there he is, and Dan Bachescu for uh, uh, organizing it on our end, and of course Michael Arbib, who's uh, been a kind of guiding light, I think, through this entire effort. Um, the, you know, Michael uh, uh, is uh, involved with the Academy for Neuro, Academy of Neuroscience for Architecture, and and they are in a sense a kind of co-sponsor with Pratt Institute on this, and. And it's our uh, kind of first association with this. Again, Dan and Michael sort of push, push the initiative, and we hope that um, this is, uh, you know, in a sense, a, a part of a, a longer engagement where uh, we can really continue this discussion because I think so many, so many things about it are important and, and are really at the, at the cutting edge of, of thinking about architecture, learning about architecture, and, of course, thinking and learning about the brain itself, um, and there have been, you know, uh, many revolutions, many, many changes very recently in the, in a sense, uh, the kind of biomechanics of the brain, our understanding of it, new technologies that are allowing us to, to see into the brain, and some of that I, I imagine will be pursued by many of the panelists here. So I just uh, am here to, uh, in a sense, express again my, my thanks and appreciation for everybody and to really hand the microphone over to Dan Bachescu and Michael. So welcome everybody and Dan and Michael. Tom has already thanked Ralph and Michael, so I was about to do that, but I will not repeat, but I want to say that uh, I met Michael at ANFA uh, in September, and uh, that's how it started. And I want to thank him particularly for his guidance all the way through. Um, then I think we should thank Ralph, an amazing organizer. Uh, without, him, without him, the conference would not have been possible. Uh, I also should thank Kurt, the Dean's assistant, who without whom, again, this wouldn't have happened. Um, and then the two in-house people who guided me on the topics and encouraged me a year and a half ago. Uh, I had not had the experience to organize many conferences, so Meredith and Hur and Catherine Ingram particularly told me what to do <laughs> and who to meet and so on. Um, having said that, the, I'm not going to introduce all the participants. You'll meet them through the day, uh, and their bios uh, are available. And uh, before each panel, you'll introduce uh, them. Generally, I should say just very briefly that the conference is organized is two days. If the reason all the all the topics obviously overlap, but we could say that. Uh, uh, first day is more about the education of an architect, and the second day, as the titles are in the in the program, neuroscience of the design process, will be a dialogue between Michael Arbib and Tom Hanrahan. Um, the neuroscience of making intelligent buildings, and finally, the last part, uh, the more political of the discussions, is the cognitive architecture and cognitive capitalism. Um, anyway, so those are the general topics. Uh, allow me to go to, uh, can I go to the next? Okay, this is one of the big slides I saw at the AMFA conference. 
It was uh, 40 feet wide, 50 feet wide. I'll let you, Michael, tell us what's the magnification ratio of this. <laughs> but um, one of the big questions that the neuroscientists face, and we all face, is this a brain or a mind, what we are looking at? So I want first to thank Michael for allowing me to use the word mind, because from the beginning he encouraged me to use the word brain. That starts an entire discussion and it'll go <laughs> through the two days, I assume. Um, <coughs> prior to this, I went to, uh, about a year ago, exactly a year ago, I went to a conference in uh, Toronto that uh, Catherine Ingram made the presentation, and uh, I went to, to, to see what's going on there. If you notice the, the poster, you know, sometimes uh, we say that, we architects say that an image is a thousand words. Well, I believe that the, uh, the rest of the world is beginning to say that a word is a thousand image. <laughs> images. That's why the word brain and the word, uh, uh, the word mind or sculpture, this was very much thought, up, thought about. Uh, as, as so um, thank you, Michael, for allowing me to use the word mind. <laughs> um, then... Uh, if you notice the design, I think that the design, I have to give credit to Ralph, we collaborated, obviously. Um, uh, that, that in the previous poster, you are outside the brain. So we thought, why don't we go inside the brain? So we zoomed in. So you, you're not outside, but inside. So that, I, as I thought naively that that has some significance. Be this as it may, the word sculpting, I want to thank Harry Mulgrave in his book. Uh, he gives credit to Warren Needich to have used it. And it's obviously a, an interesting choice of words because the word sculpting can have associations with brainwashing. <laughs> and then also it has associations with art. Uh, architecture for the Greeks was close to sculpture. In fact, Aristotle uh, in his theory of causation, he uses the sculptor as a, as a, as a model. Um, anyway, be as it may, and some criticism of architecture these days that there were too much sculptors and not enough in the service of people. All right, having said that, early on, Michael Arbib asked me a simple question about the conference. I think everyone speaking at the conference should accept the framework of, archi for, of architecture which considers the individual as a brain in a body, interacting with the social and the physical, including built environment. Well, it was an easy yes for me to say. I, I hope I spoke on behalf of an entire <laughs> school. But I picked three diagrams, Michael, that I hope meet. This is one diagram that I inherited from 30, 40 years ago when I studied environmental psychology in England. So if you notice there, then there is a, uh, on top physical events, presumed, that's interesting why it's in parentheses, mind events experienced, and then it's a process of input perception, output connotations. Connotation, is connotation is, can we choose both connotations? I don't know, anyway. The movement in time, cognitive organization, construct, sets and so on. It's self-evident and it's very naive and very uh, good for students, let's say, but uh, we go way beyond that. That's the other diagram that I've been using for a long time where there is an object or event in the external world and then inside is something called sense image or sense data. That's a linkage and then something concept in the mind. So this is the sense data coming in and then inside th th this, this shape here is the mind or the brain. Uh, uh, the, uh, it's, we process, so uh, you know, you have income perception, then we have cognition, the organization of external data. There was one more diagram and I'm done. This is a little more complex. I don't, tell you the truth, I'm afraid I don't remember where I picked them up. <laughs> I collected them along the years. But the outside universe, agent intellect, uh, I'm not gonna go into it at this point. But what I'm, the reason I end up into it, because here we see the word uh, intention, intention. 
which is kind of a pet interest of mine, uh, and, then, and so on. And then memory, uh, it includes fantasy and imagination, and so on, and ends up with the word agent as an agent. So we are not, the implications here that we are not uh, passive receiver of, of uh, outside uh, stimuli, but we are, we are agents. Thank you very much. Michael, can you take it over from here? Well, I want to thank Dan for inviting me to, to join you here and to take part in organizing this meeting. I, I did this uh, as an agent of the Academy of Neuroscience for Architecture, which is a group of architects and neuroscientists trying to learn how to talk to each other and to design some projects which carry the issue forward. What, for example, does knowing about the brain say about a school uh, as you're shaping the minds of those who inhabit it? What happens if you're designing a facility for Alzheimer's patients? What, what can be done by there? We'll be touching on a number of other topics. But I, I just wanted to uh, say two more things. One is that I first met the Academy when its president was Eduardo Macaño and so I'm delighted that he was able to join us to give a couple of talks and take part in the discussion. He is a neuroscientist himself, but has worked very closely with architects and co-teaches a course at the New School for Architecture and Design in San Diego. So he will really be able to see how neuroscience carries over into the architectural education, and that will be an important contribution. The other is to invite you all to come to the ANFA website it's www.anfarch, or anfarch, A-N-F-A-R-C-H, dot org, I think. And you'll find there uh, a, a number of interesting things, but perhaps most particularly the videos of the two international conferences we've had. Uh, the next international conference will be held, presumably in San Diego, in 2016, probably September. So I hope that a number of the ideas planted in your heads today will germinate and that we'll see quite a few of you there uh, to continue the discussion. Thanks very much.